This is Mel. She is directing and producing the film that we're making for the next four to five days. This is James, the amazing cameraman, and this is the rest of the production team. So there might be a little bit less walking, but the outcome will be incredibly exciting, I think, for you guys to watch. So there'll be some Helford, but also some cameras and some scripts and some of me going, <laughs> fuck! I don't really know what I'm filming. Basically, you can see how skillful I am at this, James. I think I'm going to put you out of a job, you know? Waggling this around. <laughs> yeah, waggling it around. Yeah. It's just like the camera off. <laughs> Everybody's heading down the crew to film on Rosemalian Point. So this morning, basically, um, so I've hiked the last two days, done a really good um, shakedown but it made more complicated by the fact that we have the opportunity to make this film over the next three or four days. So the hiking will happen, but it'll be interspersed with quite a lot of stopping and filming. And I'm learning quite a lot about presenting and what all the abbreviations mean, um, the pieces to camera and um, VO and other stuff and the bounce thing, which is the big screen that pops up and reflects light. Um, the crew are fantastic. And there's been such a lot of research that we've been doing. A couple of uh, good old friends have helped to do lots of research about the history of the area. And now we're heading down to Rosemalian Point. We're gonna be let by Treba onto their beach shortly to talk about the D-Day landings. And we're also then going to head to the ferry boat, take the ferry over to the Helford on the other side and talk about Monacanite and Monacan, which is titanium, but was discovered by the vicar in Monacan. get calloused and then you forget that they get better over time and then they need fixing again mm. Perfect. this is the best item that's ever been invented for poorly feet and that is luco tape in the uk known as zinc tape <laughs> We're um, at the mouth of the Helford River, which is one of my favourite spots. Uh, I'll show you a better view than in my face. So that's the sea. <laughs> and then round there is Falmouth. This is the mouth of the Helford. That's Nair Point. That's Rosemullion Point just around the corner to my left. And then this is the mouth of the Helford River, stretching up all the way to Greek. Daphne du Maurier's Frenchman's Creek is up there. My favourite beach where you see me swimming a lot is Grebe. And he's right there. And then you have Treba and the ferry boat round that corner. And Helford Village to Monacan, where my father grew up on the other side. So we're at the ferry boat. We're a bit late for the tide. But we're going to get the boat over to the Helford now and then hike up into Monacan. Just had um, an Amazon Prime driver in his van revving, trying to get past um, with his passenger partner delivery friend. Um, and when we were like, oh, tried to get out of the way, he got down the road, revved, turned around, came back, shouted, fuck you, out of the window, and then gave us the finger. Um, and we were all pretty shocked. It's a tiny, beautiful village. And then he stalled his car, <laughs> his van, um, which is really funny. And we all laughed at him. And then he treble revved and fucked on off the road. But there's no way out. So he's up there somewhere and he's gonna have to come back around in a minute after stalling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> We just couldn't find some paths because of um, private gardens. And it's okay, like you might buy a property and have no idea that you've bought a property that's got like an old footpath in it. 
Um, so why would you know to open it up or protect it? It's not even on OS, it's just on the Rambler's maps um, for private pathways. No, for, you know, um, public pathways from the past or ancient trade routes or whatever it might be through properties. We get to the point, girl. The point is, we just saw um, a lost path that doesn't even exist on OS maps, but is clearly, you can see the route way through with the flowers and tricorn of garlic and everything growing up a particular old trackway. Couldn't use it because there was a tree fallen, but uh, at least it was re really reassuring that it's, it's still there. You can see the echoes of them in the landscape, which is really exciting. We're in the Monacan, the new inn, community owned. My dad bought us each a little share in it when it was first floated as a community owned pub um, to make sure it was saved. But actually his photograph used to be above the fireplace and playing cricket here in the village when he was about 11 or 12. So I wonder if the photo of dad is still above the fireplace. I looked on the mantelpiece and it wasn't there, but then I came in the corner and here, grandpa, uncle Tony, Uncle Tony again, and my my cousin Anya. That's so cool. They're still here in the pub. Morning. What an amazing place to wake up. Hi, Bill. Today, very excited going to get to go to uh, the Goon Hilly area of Outstanding Natural Beauty, the ANOB, which is um, beautiful ancient land all around cutting edge space age technology of Goon Hilly Earth Station. Uh, originally uh, erected in the 60s, amazing satellite dishes where Neil Armstrong, when he landed on the moon and walked on the moon. Did he? Yes, I think he did. I'm a believer. Um, so. <laughs> When he did that, it was beamed through here, just over the hill, um, here on the Lizard Peninsula, to the world through Goon Hilly Earth Station. Now repurposed for space age, cutting edge tech and aerospace stuff, which I'm going to speak to the people in there about today. Wish we'd got there yesterday, which was on the schedule, because it was May the 4th, so we could have had a good riff on uh, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> but May the 5th also be good. I think we could make that a thing. And then we're going to go to Pop Tesco, talk about pilchard fishing and trade, speaking to a couple of really great archaeological um, research guys who've done a lot of work on trackways. All will be revealed in the film. I cannot wait to share. Um, stunning scenery. Sun's up again today. Woohoo! Um, I need a proper coffee. Um, I've taken my ADHD meds this morning. I take them every morning. Um, I'm still quite, I'm quite bouncy. Mm -mm. So <laughs> hopefully that energy will carry on all day. <laughs> Bill is in mission control. This is Bill Murray. This is Bill Murray, yes. Oh, the, Bill Murray. Uh, the guy with the camera isn't Bill Murray. <laughs> you are Bill Murray. Blimey, handsome, aren't you? He's so blimey cute. I get to be in Goonhilly Mission Control, chatting to Sean and Nick, who are teaching me all about how to look at the map and not think it just looks like colours and numbers. So now I know lots more. You have to watch the film to see all the information. Do you know why it was built here, the technology, and when it's such a special site of historical re um, relevance? Well, I think historically, and we're talking way back when, it was built here because it's on the highest point of the lizard. Uh, I see. Part of the geology of the uh, site is we're on serpentine rock. Uh, we're also miles and miles away from built up areas. So the area is quiet in terms of uh, noise in, in terms of uh, radio frequency noise mm -hmm. uh, but also the bedrock is strong enough to hold a structure like Goonhilly 1 in front of us which is 1100 tonnes of steel and concrete. 1100 tonnes! So we've made it to Poltesco National Trust site. We're going to film down to speak to some local legends who have incredible knowledge. Um, all about the pilchard fishing and the, um, the footpaths on the area. The balloon here. And that tall building there was the warehouse where they would have stored the finished, the finished stone. And across the river, 
was where they stored all the enormous blocks of serpentine that they'd cut from the quarries and transported here in carts. And there was an enormous wooden gantry stretching over here, which would lift the serpentine across the river to the factory here where it was going to be cut and Christ. polished. What rock are we, what's all this? That we're this is all serpentine. This is all serpentine. Yeah. I bought Muscles a chess set made of serpentine for his birthday. Jeez. Yeah, it's glorious. Um, sorry, so I do digress. What's that? A skew that would fly off. No, no, I have to stop I go way it's back. completely back. untrue. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's he nobody he telling the story because it's not true. The serpentine works employed boys okay, so for 10 hours a day and so their I only job was to clear this channel of stone so that the flat bottom boats could get in. So why would they be employed to have that job if the flat bottom boat story wasn't true? It proves that it's true. Bingo! In your ear, Bill. <laughs> I just started recording, that's fabulous. Tell us about the phallic nature of this standing stone, Mel. What's... Now I feel put on the spot. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not phallic ready. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lovely. Oh, it points straight up to the sun, look at that. Been ahead of a day, we've interviewed some incredible people. Um, we've been down at Poltesco, we've been inside Goon Hilly, um, as I've shown you bits and bobs of um, already. But now we are at the uh, we're at an ancient site of a standing stone, um, and where all the parish boundaries meet. We've learned about highwaymen, we've learned about bandits, we've learned about cutthroats hanging at the gibbet here. Well, or maybe even in Bodmin, but they think there might have been a gibbet here. And it's hot and sunny and amazing, oh, but quite knackering. Haven't done, so basically you've had to kind of accept, I've had to kind of accept that to get this lovely little film made over the next few days, the actual hiking route for this section, which I've hiked many, many times before, it's gone a bit by the wayside. So I'm just gonna make peace with that tomorrow, hike down to Lizard Lighthouse, like a proper good stank part of my trail walk. And then the next day um, from Greek and hike into Helston for Florida and go back to my base house that night to my home so that I can wash my gear get my stuff together and repack with not just filming and hiking in mind with the crew but just hiking in mind and my trails and uh, knowing what I need for the hike rather than how I need to anticipate SD cards and um, pieces to camera and uh, research that I need to check over again and all of that cool stuff that I didn't realize were I didn't realize it was you know it's, it's a really big operation um can't wait to share it with you but it means that my compass for hiking has been a little bit off the last day or two uh but it will be back on from uh Rinzi on sunday morning potentially not Rind potentially from helston potentially from helston let's see let's see where we're going to start off haven't decided but then the rest of the path will be as it was and then I can share with you all the illustrations and that glorious stuff um, so yeah it's not it's panned out brilliantly it's been fabulous but it hasn't been the um, continuous pathway process that I'd envisaged that's my naivety and I love learning so it's great to get things wrong well just to have to reimagine how things are going to look back on it on the weekend Okay, I'll have more to share with you later. I mean, it's exciting to share this stuff with you. Look at it. It's magnificent. Morning, morning. <laughs> it's day... I don't know what day it is, but it's day three of filming. And we're at Kennick Sands this morning. We're leaving... This is the bit where it goes above... No, below... Below the caravans on the golf course. I'm on the golf course. And here we have amazing James who's filming of course today it's he and I for a few hours we're hiking down to the lizard chatting getting kind of little stories and anecdotes as we walk and talk um, it's not as hot uh, as yesterday obviously it's quite overcast but it's refreshing for that and Bill is back on trail today hi Bill just chewing some dandelions or something We're heading to Cadworth. That way. Forgot to 
got to take a picture of this beautiful bridge and the shape of it is obviously like a ship because here we are again at Poltesco on our way through. Come on, Bill. Up, up, up. And there's the river that we were discussing yesterday used to help mine and work the serpentine coming from Greenhilly Downs. So that is Cadwy, still working fishing village that I have shown you before. It's glorious. My cousin uh, Rose out there, my family, have rowed out of there over the years on gigs. And this was used as a Coast Guard's hut. And no one's quite sure. Now it's managed by the National Trust now, but it used to be used as they think a hewer's hut. So a hewer was somebody who would come up from the village and keep their eyes out for the schools of pilchards that would be hopefully coming in up across from Land's End. And they'd be all driven in and then collected and gathered and fished out, pressed into little square barrels and taken away to be sold, sometimes to Italy and overseas. Now, imagine that as a writing room, pretty lovely. Good morning. I've woken up pretty early this morning because I am going to Helston Flora Day and I'm so excited. It's been two, three years since Flora Day has happened because of Covid and uh, today everyone's taking to the streets to dance and celebrate in this famous Cornish festival in Helston. The first dance starts at 7am and I've got quite a way to walk so I won't be getting there for 7 but hopefully I'll make it there for the Hallentau dance at 8 30 and then the children's dance starts at 9 30 I believe just walking through the car park and uh, you can see them a little bit further back I'll give them their privacy of course two lovely ladies getting dressed up in their Florida dance finery um, in the corner of the car park everyone everywhere is excited putting on their glad rags and getting ready for this amazing ceremonial day here. Can't wait to see it all in action. <laughs> well, it's not even eight o'clock and the streets are full. People in their finery getting ready for the Hallentau dance. <laughs> the welcoming of spring after winter and an extra special celebration this year as it's been not able to happen for the last few years for covid people on every little street and alleyway so excited and local people dressed up in all of their finery ready to celebrate what's going to be a glorious day so i asked this fine gentleman what's your name sir john this is john when the hall and Tau dance is going to come through here and he said Directly. Directly. Yeah. If so, you're Cornish, you know what that means. Absolutely, you do. Yeah. Did you used to do the dance? Yes, I danced in all three dances. I led the children's dance in my day. I led the morning dance in my day, and I led them at day. That's and sensational. All three of them. Yeah. And have you ever missed a year? Uh, no, not that I know of. That's amazing. My school mistress, who didn't start dancing until seven, but my head mistress uh, saw me and she said, John, we're a boy short. She said, you're big enough, so she said, you can get in there. And I did it ever since I was five. Ever since you were five? Uh, yeah, and I finished when I was about 65. This is Spingo. Can you smell it? Yeah. Spingo. It's so strong, you can probably smell it through there. They <laughs> brew it here in the Blue Anchor. The only place they brew it. Three strengths. I've gone medium. It's a long day ahead. Hope I don't end up in there. <laughs> How do they select the 40 couples that go uh, in there? Now the first four are Helston born and they have to, and they um, are, are invite, right? They get an invitation and then, but they don't know who they're dancing with. The four, the first four get, because I've done it. Oh. I've, I've been in the lead. Fabulous. Yeah, you get an invitation and then you say, yes, I would like to dance. And then they tell you who your partner is and who the other two are. So it's only the first four that know where they are. Last night, they had a practice where they go down to the chapel and they're told then what order they're going to dance in. They do not know until the night before. Lovely to be a fly on the wall. 
we're going into Bowden's homeware through the building. Can you see them in there? And then they all come out.